warning consumers about the abundance of counterfeit goods available during the FIFA World Cup tournament and the harmful impact purchasing these illegal products will have on economies around the globe. Paul Ramara, a partner at Spur and Fisher, joins us now to unpack the detail there. Thanks so much, Paul, for joining us uh, this afternoon. Well, amidst the World Cup uh, hype, I don't think anyone uh, can deny that you know counterfeit goods are out there and dealing in it uh, has been rife. Uh, people trying to make a quick buck on the one hand and on the other people just trying to simply save I mean uh, you've been involved with uh, you know seizing goods uh, in the World Cup the paint a picture first of all in what's happening on the ground here in South Africa well with South Africa being the current host of the biggest sporting spectacle it has been a problem uh, just to put matters into perspective uh, in the last six months customs or tambo airport officials have seized goods to the value of over 100 million. That gives you an indication of the kind of phenomenon that we're dealing with. Let's take a look at reasons for this phenomenon. I mean, uh, many are undoubtedly going to be uh, cropping up in defense, uh, some arguing that it's simply a supply-demand factor that we've got, uh, got to consider. I mean, certainly here at the studios, we had uh, team members out yesterday looking for, uh, for Ghana uh, shirts and none available on the ground. I mean, to what extent are we looking at a supply-demand uh, factor coming into play? Well, it plays a role, but I can tell you uh, from a counterfeiter's perspective, perspective it's it's always about making a quick buck it's not always about you know feeding into the demand so it is a big problem kind of eaters are looking to make a quick buck and you know if you look at Interpol they have recently you know identified counterfeiting at one of their top five priority crimes. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at affordability then. I mean, we do have this worldwide event being hosted on the African continent. And if uh, you're looking at the pricing of some of these uh, merchandises, you know, if you're looking at the true deal, uh, they're ranging anywhere between 600 and 800 uh, rand, you know. Uh, is there any role that companies uh, start, you know, who produce the actual goods need to start playing in this, uh, in this regard? Well, there's, there's lots of cost involved, you know, in producing genuine mm -hmm. items. Uh, but, you know, if you look at the price, for instance, uh, you know, people believe or the consumers believe that they're always getting things at a cheaper price, but that's not always the, uh, the situation. I mean, the counterfeit goods seem cheap, but what you're getting is a low bad quality product mm -hmm. and that is a big problem well let's take a look at the broad implications here because as a consumer uh, you you really pay little attention to the effects it has on a broader economy scale so let's take a look at some of the impact it's had uh, on industry specifically here in south africa the textile industry for one well not only the textile i mean, what you're looking is loss of jobs mm -hmm. uh, you're also looking at the consumer suffering i mean paying a bit more for things that are made of cheaper quality. And also, you know, when people look at counterfeiting, they're always looking at clothing. But, you know, it has extended into other products as well, so it, like pharmaceutical products. So, you know, there's also uh, social risk there. Mm -hmm. What are the repercussions then for those involved in dealing with counterfeit goods? Well, there are criminal and civil uh, sanctions. Uh, you know, for a suspect that is involved in counterfeit goods, you're looking at five years imprisonment for a second time offender. So, you know, there are really stiff sanctions against counterfeiters. Is it real? To what extent is it being enforced? Because we know that it's actually enforcement of those rules and regulations that often come uh, into play and pose a bit of a challenge. Well, that has actually been the challenge. You know, when people look at counterfeiting, as I've said earlier, they look at it as, you know, only involving apparel, clothing, eyewear. But, you know, it goes further than that. You know, we have seen situations in Nigeria where babies died as a result of taking fake medicines. Mm -hmm. So it is much bigger than we actually think it is. Well, let's take a look at uh, when it comes to these uh, sporting uh, goods specifically. We've got INTA committed to helping raise uh, public awareness of these fake goods. How do you know as a consumer if you're being duped? Well, you firstly have to look at the quality of the stitching. You have to look at, at the material. 
<laughs> and and often a price is uh, often the best giveaway. Uh, you've mentioned earlier about you know sports apparel, you know selling for about six hundred, and if you get one that sells for about four hundred, I mean considering the cost associated with making a genuine product, mm -hmm. you know there is no way it can be offered at that particular price. Well, uh, Paul Romara, we're going to have to leave it there for today. Thanks so much for having joined us at the desk. Uh, just talking about the football, are you going to be enjoying any matches uh, this weekend? I'll be, and uh, you know, I hope Ghana will win today. I think uh, the entire continent is behind uh, the Black Stars at this stage of the game.